Automotive LPG, or Autogas, is a special mix of gases for use in vehicles. It can be propane or a mix of propane and butane. This mixture makes it incompatible for use with household appliances. It also makes it unsuitable for use in 9 kilo cylinders, used for camping, barbecues, patio heaters and other similar applications. It is also illegal to fill cylinders from the autogas dispenser. Automotive LPG is a flammable substance and ignition sources should be eliminated from the entire system. Automotive LPG is stored at ambient temperature but will boil when released to the atmosphere so care must be taken not to come into contact with the product at any time. Automotive LPG is non-toxic, however, if present in confined space, will displace the breathable air, which could lead to asphyxiation. During the operation of filling a vehicle, LP gas will be transferred from the site's LPG storage tank to the vehicle tank. An autogas system is made up of the following components and equipment. The storage tank, the pipework, the dispenser hose and nozzle, air compressor and the emergency shutdown system. This video will show you the operations of all components and the equipment, the checks that you can follow and the actions to take when there is a problem. The component that the customer is required to use to fill their car is referred to as the dispenser. Connections are made between the dispenser and vehicle via the hose and nozzle. An autogas dispenser will take about three minutes to fill the average 60 litre tank in a passenger car. To start the filling process, the customer should enter the service station and park beside the dispenser, allowing enough room to walk around the entire vehicle. The engine must be switched off and the filler flap released. The service station attendant has a responsibility to make sure the driver stays at the dispenser at all times during the filling process. If a customer is unsure on how to fill their vehicle, they can refer to the filling instructions located on the dispenser prior to filling the vehicle. Smoking and the use of mobile phones and other personal electronic equipment is not allowed at any time during the filling process. First, the vehicle filler valve cap is removed. The customer should be encouraged to inspect the filler valve seal to ensure it's in good condition and free from debris. Then, the nozzle is lifted from the dispenser and connected to the filler valve in the vehicle. Care should be taken not to cross-thread the nozzle on the vehicle fill valve. No gas will flow until the connection is complete and the lever squeezed. If fitted, a latch can be used. However, foreign objects must never be used to jam the nozzle open. The flow of gas can be stopped at any time by releasing the lever. The LPG tank in the vehicle has an automatic fill limiter, which stops the gas flow when the tank is full. The tank will only fill to a maximum of 80%. On some occasions, the automatic fill limiter will make a clunk noise as the flow of gas is stopped. This is normal and of no concern to the customer. The lever is released and the dispenser nozzle disconnected. If a latch has been used, release the latch before releasing the lever. There will be a very small release of LPG when the lever is released. This is normal. However, care must be taken to ensure the gas does not come into contact with skin or eyes. The nozzle is returned to the dispenser and the cap is replaced to keep the vehicle filler valve free of dust and moisture. This completes the automotive LPG filling process. The safe operation of any LPG retail site relies on regular system checks, inspections and a high standard of general housekeeping. This applies to all sites, regardless of their design. Inspections must be made and recorded, as they are a part of the legal records for that site for later reference. What is checked and how often it is checked is shown in the LPG site manual. If any part of the LPG system is found to be faulty, it must be reported without delay and recorded in the LPG site manual. If a gas leak is found and you're in doubt about what to do, call the phone number for specialist advice located on the LPG emergency procedure sign 
or in your site's emergency procedure handbook or the site's LPG site manual. System checks should include, but are not limited to the following. Level gauges, pressure gauges with normal tank pressures being around 700 kilopascals or KPA. No LP gas above ground storage tank should be filled over 80%. However, underground LP gas storage tanks can be filled to 88%. Make sure that the fill point compartment is securely locked or latched to prevent tampering when not in use. Check the fill point to ensure that it is clean and secure and the seal on the valve is in its place. The access to the fill point and level gauges should be kept clear and well maintained. Ullage lines are level indicators on the bulk supply tank. Inspect for damage, for valves that are not closed and for leaks. Also, check the hydrostatic relief valves in the transfer lines to make sure they are not leaking and have plastic caps to protect them from dirt and moisture. Remember that any ice formation around seals, pipes or flanges indicates a gas leak. Check the LP gas pump and make sure it's not leaking and the area around it is clean and tidy. Check the LPG dispenser by removing the cabinet panels. Make sure there is no leak and the area around it is clean and tidy. Check the air actuated valves under the dispenser in the dispenser base. To save slips, trips and falls, ensure good housekeeping around the LPG storage tanks. Remove any rubbish or combustible litter. Inspection of nozzles, look for clean seals in good condition and check for worn or damaged Acme threads. If damage is found, put the nozzle out of service and contact your LPG maintainer to have it repaired. The lever should have a smooth action and when engaged, the ratchet should be impossible to turn in one direction. Inspect for smoothness of dispenser hoses, checking for wear and tear, cracks, nicks, bulges, damage and leaks. Hand operated manual valves, inspect for damage and leaks. These valves are used for maintenance. Inspect the three air actuated ball valves. These are the liquid fill line, the liquid outlet and the bypass and vapour return. For an underground tank, these valves will be located in the tank turret. Inspect for damage and leaks and ensure that air lines to the valves are in good condition and secured to the valve. It is these valves which will be activated in an emergency shutdown procedure. It is essential that they are in good working order. In an underground system, check the turret for any water coming in. Inspect the air compressor which supplies compressed air to the system. It must be in good working order and any water drained routinely, as air pressure is used to keep the air activated valves open during normal operations. If the air pressure is lost for any reason, the air activated valves will close. The condition of the firefighting equipment, including hose reels, fire extinguishers and garden hose must be checked. Look for damage and with hose reels, ensure that these are checked for good flow of water. Emergency shutdown instructions must be displayed at the tank filling area near the dispenser, at the console operator station and at all emergency stop activation points. The lettering must be clear and readable and the signage must not be hidden by stands or displays. The emergency shutdown system is essential in the safe operation of the site and must be tested and logged according to the site logbook. Let's take a look at this emergency shutdown system in detail. What is the emergency shutdown procedure and how does it work? The LPG auto gas system is a sealed system of three components, a storage tank, a pump and a dispenser. The storage tank is joined to a pump by pipes and valves and the pump is joined to the dispenser by some pipes and valves. This is the same for a site with an underground storage tank except that the pump and valves are all fitted on and into the tank and are housed in a pit called a turret. Compressed air is needed to hold the valves open for normal operation and is supplied by an air compressor. Finally, a series of clearly labelled emergency stop buttons or ESDs and signs must be located within a reasonable distance from the tank filling point near the dispenser and near where the console operator is located. These must be tested at least once a week, 
using a different button each time to ensure they are operational. In an emergency, for example, a large leak of LP gas vapour or liquid or a fire, any emergency stop button can be pressed, which will dump the air from the airlines. The air actuator valves at the tank and dispenser will complete a one quarter turn from open to closed position when the system is shut down, taking about 12 seconds for the valves to close. It may take some time for all the lines and hoses to be empty of gas. The valves will stay closed until the compressed air supply is manually reset. In a fire, the fire sensors, which are plastic air-filled lines built into the system, should melt and drop the air pressure to the valves, activating the emergency shutdown automatically. This should never be assumed, and a manual shutdown using the emergency stop button is recommended. The LPG supply is now isolated. The next step is to evacuate the site safely and calmly, and put up barriers to keep people out. This should be done by using the public address system or by physically informing customers while getting them to move out of the area. Finally, call the emergency number located on the emergency procedure sign and the fire brigade. Never use a mobile phone near LP gas or any other fuel. If evacuating the site, leave a phone number on which you can be contacted. In the event of an LP gas leak or fire, a water spray may be used to disperse the LP gas and to control the fire, as long as it's safe to do so. Remember, LP gas is heavier than air, so it will flow into drains, pits or basements. Never enter a confined space which contains LP gas, as asphyxiation may result due to the lack of breathable air. Ensure that the maintenance team who have attended the site to fix the problem have completed all work before the site reopens for business. When the emergency is over, the air supply must be reset. Press the reset button for about 20 seconds. This allows the air pressure to build up and for the valves to reopen. It is essential that the emergency shutdown system be tested regularly by the site operator and any faults be reported and repaired immediately. Make sure that all emergency stop buttons are tested. There are many valves and all must be checked to make sure they will work in an emergency. This concludes the emergency shutdown procedure. It's vital that the procedure be followed quickly and accurately in the event of a leak or fire. Let us take a look at some emergency situations which may arise during or after LP gas filling. If the filler valve in the vehicle leaks after filling is complete, then the following procedure may be followed. Put on appropriate gloves and eye protection. Reconnect the nozzle. Squeeze the lever twice. Disconnect the filler nozzle. If the filler valve continues to leak, wearing appropriate gloves, fit a brass filler cap, which is designed to stop the leak. The brass caps can often be used to stop a leak on the tank filler valve too. A deposit is charged for this brass cap and the deposit is refunded when the brass cap is returned. You are required to have two brass caps on site. If a brass cap is used and not returned that day or the next day, contact your LPG supplier and arrange for a replacement. The customer must be instructed to have the filler valve repaired at an authorised LP gas repairer quickly and not to park the vehicle inside a building until the filler valve is repaired. If the brass cap does not seal the leak, then do not start the vehicle, but push the vehicle to a safe location away from the dispenser and call the fire brigade. Instruct the driver to remove any passengers and to stay away from the vehicle. Do not put the vehicle inside a building or workshop and do not drive the vehicle, as starting the engine may ignite any leaking gas vapour. If the nozzle leaks after filling, pull the trigger twice in quick succession. You might find holding the trigger open stops the leak. Do not remove the filler nozzle from the car. Shut the dispenser down using the ESD. Then call the specialist advice number immediately. This is located in your LPG emergency procedure. Also, make sure you remember to record the leak in the site logbook. If a faint smell of LP gas is noticed, but there appears to be no leak, then make sure you check the following. 
the fixed level or ullage gauge, the gas pump, the dispenser which contains the meter seal and other parts, the nozzle and hose. Remember to call the LP gas maintainer and report what you find. Use the three S's, sight, sound and smell to locate gas leaks. Sight, seeing ice or vapour. Remember, on a really dry day, you may not see a vapour cloud. Sound, hearing the hiss of escaping gas. Remember, a hissing noise with no smell is possibly an air leak. Smell, the detection of the odourant used in LP gas. There are many situations where people hear a gas leak. This may be the air system leaking, however, air doesn't smell. Always play it safe and shut down the system until you know what the problem is. What if somebody has suffered hot burns in a fire or cold burns from LP gas liquid touching the skin? The treatment for hot burns is to run clean tap water over the burn for at least 10 minutes and up to 20 minutes for a severe burn. Treat all cold burns with lukewarm water for about 20 minutes. Depending on the severity of the burn, call emergency services and urge the customer to seek medical advice. Remember to always record the customer details on the incident report. This concludes the presentation on LP gas for use in automotive vehicles. The versatile and economical LP gas for cars and trucks. Now, let's recap on the main points. An LP gas system is made up of a storage tank, pipework, valves, pump and a dispenser. Compressed air is used to hold all the air actuated valves open. The emergency shutdown procedure will close all air activated valves in about 12 seconds if any emergency stop button is pressed. A brass cap is available if a customer's filler valve leaks. While there is a high degree of safety built into the shutdown system, always use gloves and eye protection when attending to any gas leaks. In the event of a hot burn, flood the burn with tap water for about 20 minutes. Treat all cold burns with lukewarm water in the same manner. Then, urge the customer to seek medical advice. You are required to carry out your daily checks to ensure that the operations of the site is safe for you and your customers. Remember to check the following in accordance with site procedures. Hoses and nozzles, dispensers and compressors, tanks and housekeeping, access to fill points and level gauges, emergency shutdown equipment. If you operate and inspect the equipment as described, then the chance of having an incident will be reduced. To operate a safe site, you should have a sound understanding of the operations and of the checks required of the LP gas system on your service station. Australia has over 3,000 service station outlets supplying automotive LP gas making Australia the most capitalised automotive LP gas country in the world. Australia's safety record is due to the sustained excellence and commitment of all involved.